This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash top tens and use the code top tens to get 70% off a three year plan and an extra month for free. Protect yourself online today and let's get into it. From watching documentaries or shows like Orange is the New Black, you may already have an idea of what a person can purchase or receive while they are in jail. Or you might actually know someone who's had to take an extended vacation from real life for a while. You probably imagine items like shower shoes and candy bars when you envision what they are selling inside your nearest prison. But in actual fact, the truth can indeed be stranger than fiction. Depending on your location, some of the items you can find inside are actually downright bizarre, and not to mention a bit messed up. Number 10. Baby Clams and Oysters Prison food may be better than you think. At one federal prison, you can buy smoked oysters and baby clams at the commissary. These prison delicacies are eaten as tapas in South America and can even be eaten live in Asian countries as a novelty dish. Oysters might be considered a delicacy, and it's certainly something you'd think of as true foodies eating, so it's pretty odd that they're available in prison. We can't really imagine the inmates breaking out the baby clams as a film night snack instead of popcorn, let alone oysters. Why would oysters be sold in prison? Surprisingly, you can get a whole lot of seafood from inmate stores like tinned sardines and salmon. It is probably a bit better than the regular jail food. Number 9. Crochet Hooks You may think that inmates sitting around knitting for charity sounds crazy, but that's exactly what happens in some of the correctional facilities. Knitting Behind Bars is a program that took five years to get off the ground and is now going strong after a lot of hard work and determination by Lynn Zwirling and a team of volunteers. After leaving her job, Zwirling had time on her hands and realized that the calming power of knitting could be the very thing to help rehabilitate inmates in the local prison system. Surprisingly, despite some initial resistance, the program became highly successful against all odds. Knitting calms the prisoners, gives them peace of mind, and gives them something meaningful to do. Just as in any other knitting circle, prisoners have a chance to socialize, exchange ideas, use etiquette, and communicate with each other and with the women who teach them. No one is allowed to curse or call each other names when they're in class. Prisoners in the program have to be on their best behavior. Some will even go so far as to give up their dinner just so they can attend the weekly two-hour sessions. Number 8. Waist Trimmers Inmates at one federal prison may buy waist trimmers from the commissary for around $10. In case you didn't know, a waist trimmer works like Spanx in that they compress your wobbly bits, giving the illusion of a thinner waist, thighs, and flatter tummy. Some waist trimmers are even sold and marketed as a way to lose weight, something experts do not consider to be strictly accurate. So why are they selling them in prison? Well, it would seem to merely be to address the prisoner's insecurities concerning their body parts. It could certainly be argued that even people in jail are forced to change their appearance in order to suit a certain idealized image, as, well, these items are clearly being sold. Number 7. Moustache Scissors You can buy moustache scissors and beard trimmers in one Georgia jail. We definitely consider this a pretty expensive grooming item as it comes in at around $8. Just think about that for a few seconds. It's essentially just scissors. I mean, how important are they really? I don't own a pair of moustache scissors. Well, when it comes to personal grooming, some prisons actually have very strict rules. You have to keep yourself clean and well-groomed, because if you don't, you can get a violation or, worse still, face the wrath of your fellow prisoners. Further, you've got to wonder if allowing prisoners to have any kind of bladed tools is safe. We can see inmates nurturing their moustaches only so that they have an excuse to get their hands on a weapon. Number 6. Prison Gift Shop Yes, it's a thing. Prison gift shops mostly aimed at tourists, but often open to inmates sell things you'd find in most tourist hotspots. Hoodies, keyrings, and coffee mugs. They're typically housed in or close to some of the country's worst jails in terms of institutional violence, death sentences, sexual assault, and solitary confinement. Some of them are run directly by prisons and even prisoners. And boy, you can buy some fun items in them. In Huntsville, Texas, home to Old Sparky, you can find shot glasses and t-shirts proudly proclaiming property of Texas prison system. We're not sure who'd want to wear those after an extended holiday off the grid, though. At Angola, Louisiana, prisoners run the Prison View Golf Course that's open to the public. Golf balls are among the favorites purchased at this particular golf shop. The prison also has a notorious reputation for keeping inmates in extreme isolation for decades hence the very popular Angola dog collars. And just before we get into the rest of today's video, I want to tell you about a way that you can stay secure, and that's by using NordVPN. If you're buying things online and using a non-secure Wi-Fi spot, you really should be using a VPN, and that's where NordVPN comes in. I know it's tempting not to bother, so I'll just hope for the best, but really, those stories you read about online of people having their data stolen, it really does happen, and we don't want that to be you. Whenever I'm browsing on public Wi-Fi, I'll just keep a VPN on in the back 
background so I don't have to worry about anyone stealing my data. But it's not just about security. NordVPN can also change the country that you appear to be in. So, for example, say you want to watch a movie on a popular online streaming platform and it's only available in that other country. Why don't you just log on to Nord and be like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm in that country. And, uh everything will be peachy. NordVPN is super fast, so watching video is a breeze. There's no lag whatsoever. Look, if you've used VPNs and thought they were slow in the past, it's not the case with Nord. And you can use it on all your devices very easily. Android, Chrome, Windows, Linux, and on six different devices, or with just one account. Also, there are no logs kept at all, unlike companies based in the EU or US. NordVPN, they're over in Panama, so they just don't have to keep logs at all, which is great for your privacy. So start protecting your internet experience today. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash top tens. Use code top tens to get 70% off a three year plan and an extra month for free. Protect yourself online today and let's get back to the video. Number five, a spork. For certain inmates, a trip to the prison commissary might give them a little bit of joy at an otherwise dark point in their lives. That's probably why most commissaries are selling sporks. Because we all know nothing says you'll find happiness once you farm me down and use me as a knife quite like a spork does. Luckily, most prisons have begun to move away from plastic utensils and are looking at new and innovative utensils such as the Ecotensil, a utensil made of slick cardboard similar to that of a milk carton. It folds to create a robust yet simple structure that lets prisoners cut through most food items such as tamales or eggs, but not human skin. The utensil also has perforations around the edges, allowing the product to break down more easily if swallowed or flushed. According to the tool's designer, the biggest concern with plastic utensils is the opportunities they create for prisoners to turn them into lethal weapons for use against personnel, other prisoners, or to harm themselves. As such, the novel use of paperboard renders their utensils virtually non-weaponizable. Number four nunchucks. Although this cannot be bought in any commissary, one guy actually made his own. During his daily workshop session, Lorenzo Pollard decided to create a cool pair of karate tools from the legs of his chair and some linen. That should sound like the kind of thing a child would do and then expertly knock himself out with, but Pollard actually made a break for it. First, he successfully fought off a dozen or so armed guards before breaking a glass block window and jumping over two different wire fences, effectively giving him the name Bruce Lee. At some points, when several guards were trying to overpower him, Pollard scrambled up to the second level of the prison, where he bravely continued to fight off guards until he could get back out of another window. It just goes to show where there's a will, there will be a way. Number 3. Hippie Crack laughing gas. In 2007, three inmates in the prison in the United Kingdom were filmed inhaling nitrous oxide, popularly known as laughing gas, from canisters they filled through balloons. The colorless gas is also fondly referred to as hippie crack. In the video footage of the men captured by an unnamed individual, we can see them in various different inebriated stages as they inhale the gas. In one of the clips, it actually appears as if one of the prisoners actually lost consciousness. The inhalation of nitrous oxide can cause feelings of relaxation and euphoria, but it can also cause individuals to experience hallucinations when it is being used at elevated doses and can even lead to death if there's a lack of oxygen when being abused. Number 2. Prison Wine Alcohol has been with us through the best and worst of circumstances since the dawn of time. It has managed to survive countless attempts to restrict and boycott it, yet it still managed to emerge victorious due to the perseverance of mankind. Whatever the situation or crisis may be, we have always found a way to make our own liquor. But nowhere is this unstoppable spirit more patently clear than in prisons around the globe. Despite its dangers, freshly made jailhouse booze, or pruno, has a wide range of titles and can be made from mixtures that can include any type of fruit, tea, sugar, and even other ingredients such as moldy bread. The industry probably began to thrive one day after human history had taken its first prisoner to its cell. And try as they might, prison guards and other officials have never been able to stop it. In fact, it has become such an ingrained part of prison culture that many of today's wardens now accept it as part of the package when they begin their duties. Number 1 bombs. You've probably heard about the grain silos that can explode due to the fine dust grain produces, which, when ignited, burns extremely fast. Essentially, it burns the very air inside, causing it to explode. The same principle applies to any other extremely fine powder. In fact, some mines used to spontaneously combust because fine coal dust would burst into flames. But if you've got the brains, you might be able to do the same with fine powder as straightforward as regular coffee whitener. In the United Kingdom, a few prison officials came dangerously close to finding out exactly how easy prisoners can build a bomb from whitener. Ironically, had the prison supplied milk instead of whitener, they would have been safer. Four inmates were caught when their tea time experiments burst after it was lit and thrown into the stairwell. Luckily, it did not explode completely. Prison bombs are not an exact science after all, but it alerted the authorities to what could have been a very dangerous weapon. 
So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do smash that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day of the week. And do check out our fantastic sponsor, NordVPN, linked to below. And thank you for watching.